In recombinant DNA technology or in genetic engineering, our objective is basically to transfer a particular gene into cells and then use those cells as factories to produce products that are synthesized by our gene. Let us take a simple example. For example, we intend to produce, let us say, insulin, insulin hormone. Uh, uh, in, in, a, in a much more efficient, cheaper, you know, beneficial way. So what do we do? We can choose a particular cell, for example, let us let us choose yeast. Now yeast is a is a fungi and yeast cells are actually very easy to cultivate, very easy to cultivate and grow. So what we can do is uh, we can take this gene for insulin and we can we can use the DNA of this yeast. We can open up the DNA of the yeast and side of this particular DNA, we can introduce this gene the the gene that produces insulin and then uh, this particular cell the yeast cell that now contains the gene of our interest will also start producing insulin inside of the yeast cells and later on these cells can be broken down and insulin protein can be harvested so this becomes a very easy method easy as well as an, a very economical method to obtain large amounts of a certain protein of our interest in this case insulin now wide varieties of other proteins can be obtained uh, uh, for variety of purposes, for pharmaceutical purposes, for uh, basically in the field of medicine or in the field of research. So uh, in the field of other industries, enzymes are used. So <clears throat> this is called, this basically is genetic engineering. Now genetic engineering is, uh, this is not so, so very straightforward. Now let us look into the details of what basically happens and how this is done. So first thing that we do is we need a particular source. So we use a particular source for the DNA. For example, in case of insulin, let us use the human genome. And from the human genome, let us say we have obtained a particular section of uh, the DNA that produces insulin. So let us say this is the DNA that produces the insulin, uh, insulin hormone, right? So first thing is this. Second, uh, we need a particular cell inside of which we will insert this uh, gene of our interest and which will act as a factory. So let us say we've chosen a particular cell. Let us say in this particular case, uh, let, it, let this be a particular bacteria. Let's say, for example, let's this, let this be a bacteria, a particular bacteria. Now, somehow we need to put this DNA into the bacteria. So what do we need? We need something known as a vector. And what are vectors? Vectors are carriers of these genes or segments of our interest, which will then integrate this these particular genes of our interest into the genome of the uh, organism for example in this particular case bacteria so let us say this is the bacterial genome right now there are wide variety of vectors that are used so for example the most common ones are plasmids so plasmids are vectors and similarly there are phages bacteriophages are also used as vectors and wide variety of viruses are also used as vectors certainly we uh, make these virus uh, harmless Right? So some examples of virus are adenovirus and retrovirus, etc, etc. But let's not go that far and just proceed with what we have at our hand today. Now, what do we use is we make use of a particular vector. So let us take an example of this most common vector called PBR322. <clears throat> now, PBR322 was is still one of the uh, most commonly used vectors. There are wide variety of other vectors used. And this vector is named after two individuals, Bolivar and Rodriguez. This is an artificial plasmid. This does not occur naturally and this was been this was designed by them. Now let us first of all look into the details of this particular vector and then come back here. Now <clears throat> this particular vector PBR322 has a couple of sequences. We've got something called as the ORI site. This is basically where the origin of replication is. Then you've got something called as the ROPE site where, which, which basically regulates the number of these particular plasmid in a particular cell. Now uh, what must what you must bear in mind is uh, each plasmid has the ability to replicate independently of the genome of the bacteria, right? So a bacteria may divide once every 20 minutes, but the plasmid can divide independently of the division or replication of the genomic DNA. They, they can divide twice, thrice, four times. Sometimes they may even divide uh, many times to produce hundreds of copies uh, inside of a particular cell, right? So this is the function of the rope gene. It controls the copy number. Then we've got two very important sequences. This is called the TER R site and MPAR site. TER R stands for tetracycline resistant site. So this basically is a gene. And this gene synthesizes a particular protein which has the ability to destroy tetracycline antibiotic. Sim similarly, we have another gene here, MPAR, MP cycline 
uh, ampicillin sorry ampicillin resistant gene what this gene does the product of ampicillin resistant gene uh, basically it's an enzyme it destroys the antibiotic ampicillin so any particular microorganism that has the this particular vector inside it let us assume this particular vector has a bacteria has this particular vector inside if you grow this bacteria in a media that contains tetracycline or that contains ampicillin this bacteria will survive it will not die why because it is producing uh, enzymes both the enzymes one of which will can, has the ability to destroy tetracycline and the other has the ability to basically digest or destroy ampicillin antibiotic so these particular sites the uh, antibiotic resistant genes basically in the vector act as markers or act as beacons or act as indicators that yes now we are inside the particular cell inside a particular cell of our interest anyway so <clears throat> proceeding a little further we have just discussed the structure of pbr322 now how do we basically figure out whether a particular cell has been transformed now let us first of all understand what transformants are now transformants are the cells that have taken up the vector now, uh, now how does the basic process go so we've got a gene of interest let's rapidly just go for this let's say this is the gene of interest and i'm going to draw a couple of bacteria uh, let's not let's not be bothered about the shape of these particular bacteria they appear like okay but they may be bacillus i'm just going to give a basic representation so let us say we have a couple of bacteria we have our gene of interest here let us say we have our gene of interest and here we've got our plasmid pbr322 now what we are going to do is basically we make a cut somewhere inside this particular plasmid let us look at the next slide here and this is exactly the process that we, i intended to speak so let me just let me just magnify this and get to you so what we do how does this process of recombinant dna technology proceed so we take this particular vector here we got the two antibiotic resistant sites tetracycline resistant ampicillin resistant then we will make use of a particular restriction endonuclease and we will we will either make use of a restriction endonuclease sal1 or bam h1 why because these two restriction sites are present inside the tetracycline resistant gene there are many other restriction sites present elsewhere which can be used by the genetic engineer as per his or her convenience anyway so what we do is we make use of a restriction enzyme and we produce a nick inside the tetracycline resistant gene of the plasmid now let us assume we've taken the uh, we've taken restriction enzyme sal1 here and we've used a restriction enzyme sal1 and we've produced a cut here and what does this do this produces an open uh, linear plasmid with two overhangs basically there are two sticky ends and now we use the same restriction enzyme and we obtain our gene of interest so let us say this is our gene of interest now why do we use the same restriction enzyme to produce to basically generate the complementary sticky end so that the ligation the introduction of this gene into the vector becomes easy so now in the next step what do we do we mix these two <clears throat> we take the gene of interest and the linear dna and we mix them together and we add an enzyme called ligase and we expect ligation to happen so ideally what is shown here is <clears throat> what is uh, what we expect that uh, all the plasmids will close and there will be this gene that will be inserted inside of this particular region the tetracycline resistant gene region and we'll get a plasmid like this definitely this will happen but the chances of this happening is fairly low now basically there are three possible outcomes when we open up the particular plasmid and we mix it with the gene of our interest and we add ligase there are three possible outcomes one is that the plasmid some of these plasmids will re-anneal which means they will not take the gene of interest rather because they have the similar sticky ends right so they will re-anneal and they'll form the original plasmid one is uh, <clears throat> original plasmid formation original plasmid is restored in some cases another possibility is that uh, some some of these uh, we will have the gene of interest inside of them right some of them will have their gene of interest so this is the second possibility or there are only two possibilities at the moment and some of these plasmids will take up the gene of interest so we will have the plasmid plus we'll have the gene of interest so there are two outcomes that are possible now we take these two particular plasmids basically we don't know which plasmid is which so we only have a collection of plasmid because this entire process of uh, uh, annealing or basically addition ad adding the gene of interest into the plasmid is taking in a test tube or maybe in a conical flask or in s s some kind of a container so now we basically have a mixture of these two types of plasmids 
the restored plasmids and the plasmids with our gene of interest. Now, what is the next step? The next step is transformation. And how does transformation take place? So now in, in a particular, let, a, let us assume we take a particular conical flask and inside the, of that conical flask, we have our bacteria of our interest. So we got our bacteria. So what do we do? We introduce these plasmids. Basically, we cannot segregate both of them. So we add the entire content into this particular conical flask. Now here, the bacteria there now there will be like three outcomes and what those three outcomes will be let me just go to the previous slide and talk about those particular three outcomes so the three outcomes will be some of these bacteria let me first of all draw genomic dna in all the three bacteria so let us say this is the genomic dna and now let us say these are the bacteria present into the conical flask now three outcomes are possible the first outcome is that uh, and how, basically these all of these this particular conical flask flask is exposed to conditions which will make the bacteria competent now, how can bacteria be made competent? We can add either calcium rich solute, calcium, calcium ions into it, which will uh, make pores in the cell wall and also expose them to slight bit of a heat shock uh, that you've uh, seen in the video elsewhere. Also, we can make use of a technique called electroporation, which will make the cell walls a little more permeable so that these uh, plasmids can enter into the cell. So let us say we've made the cells competent and we've mixed them with the plasmids. So what happens next? Now, three outcomes are possible. <clears throat> some of these bacteria will only take up the uh, unaltered plasmid which means they will only take up this original restored plasmid right the plasmid that re annealed on itself without taking in the gene so some of the bacteria will take that some of the bacteria will just not take up any plasmid it will have no plasmid in spite of making it competent some of the bacterial cells will fail to take up the plasmid some of them and there will be other bacteria which will have our plasmid with the gene of interest and these particular cells are called the transformed cells and the other two are non-transformed now bear in mind that the first type here has the plasmid but it does not have the gene of interest so we consider it as a non-transformed plasmid there is no transformation that has taken place i mean practically speaking for our uh, for our uh, convenience for our uh, better understanding so now how do we basically in this now in this particular solution we got all these three types of bacteria now, how do we screen which particular bacteria has our uh, is basically uh, the one that we need <clears throat> so what do we do we take a petri plate in the first case right now let me draw the three kind of bacteria here also so this becomes easy so let's say we've got bacteria one and two and three and the first one, let's also draw their genomic DNA. So this is the genomic DNA for the three. And then this first one has the plasmid alone. The second has no plasmid. And the third has the plasmid plus our gene of interest. This is our actually transformed. This is our actually transformed uh, bacteria. Now we need to screen this out. So what do we do is uh, basically we will take a Petri plate. We'll take a Petri plate and we will transfer these microbes into this Petri plate all of these ones okay the mixture and inside of this petri plate what do we have we have nutrient media right so we've got some kind of a nutrient inside it we've got agar with a source of carbon let's say we've got glucose and variety of other sorts and along with this these particular nutrients we will also have the antibiotic ampicillin <clears throat> ampicillin in this media in this particular plate now once we pour all these bacteria that we had obtained basically a mixture of these three types of bacteria inside what will happen is the first kind of bacteria the the bacteria that took up the vector but took up the vector that did not have the gene what will happen to these particular bacteria remember because they have taken up the vector and this particular vector has the ampicillin resistant gene inside it this has the ampicillin resistance so these particular bacteria will survive they will survive in the plate the other kind of bacteria, the ones that fail, that fail to take up the vector, they will not grow in this particular media because it has an antibiotic ampicillin and the antibiotic ampicillin will destroy them, will kill them, will not allow the growth of these particular bacteria. And the third kind of bacteria that we are greatly interested in are the ones that have the plasmid and that also has our gene of interest will survive. Why will they survive is because the plasmid has ampicillin resistant gene 
our gene of interest was introduced in the media in, in the in this region uh, of tetracycline resistance right so this bacteria the one that we are interested in then the one that carries our gene of interest still has ampicillin resistant in it and this will also survive now we'll have a colony here let us say i'm drawing a petri plate here in this particular petri plate we will have colonies and all the colonies will appear the same right we cannot distinguish between the colonies but we are sure of one thing that all of these colonies the bacteria in these colonies are either the ones that contain only the plasmid or uh, or are the bacteria that contain the plasmid with our gene of interest but this particular plate does not contain any bacteria that have not taken up the plasmid now the challenge comes here how do we differentiate between these two how from these particular colonies how do we know which ones are the ones that have been completely transformed right how do we figure that out so in order to do that we make use of a particular technique called the uh, it's called the replica plating method and here we've got a replica plating method so let me just modify it let us say this is our plate and these are the colonies let's say we've got one two three four and five and six and let's say we've got large number of colonies around now all the colonies appear same some of these colonies contain only the plasmid some of these colonies uh, the bacteria and some of these colonies contain plasmid along with the gene of our interest how do we figure them out so what do we do let us say this is the plate that uh, in which uh, we have these two bacteria right we have these two bacteria the first one and the last one now what do we do in replica plating method we take the original plate and we call this plate as the master plate this is called the master plate and then we take something called as a velveteen pad so this is a velveteen pad it is nothing fancy so we have got a velvet cloth here on top of a certain uh, circular ring like pipe pipe like structure and this uh, cloth is hold taut it is firmly held and a pad is made and then this particular plate is basically put on top of this velveteen and very slightly pressed on top of it right it is very slightly pressed on top of it so what will happen some of these microorganisms these particular bacteria from these particular bacterial colonies will get their tiny little imprints here very tiny so we don't press it too hard right because we we don't want to destroy our original plate and we'll see why so what will happen is we'll get a couple of these we'll basically get the imprints of some of these bacteria here and then we will lift our plate back we'll lift our petri plate back close it and keep it in the incubator or to preserve it somewhere probably in the refrigerator at lower temperature so we have to preserve this plate we'll see why and now the velveteen pad that we have now we have this particular velveteen pad what do we do there with this particular thing we take this velveteen pad and we press it on top of another petri plate so let's say we have another petri plate and in this particular petri plate we'll have our nutrient media plus this time in this particular nutria will nutrient media we will have tetracycline antibiotic tetracycline antibiotic and so now our media is ready here right and we'll take this velveteen pad and now press it on top of this plate and we press it on top of this particular plate what will what should what should happen if you press this velveteen pad you will get an exact replica of our master plate here what do i mean by that is we will have the colonies we'll have some bacteria from these original colonies which will be represented in the in the in the same place they will grow up in the same place right so that's why this is called the replica plating method so now basically we've created a living Xerox copy of our master plate. Now because this media contains tetracycline, some bacteria will perish. Which ones will go? Now have a look. We had in inserted our gene of interest inside the tetracycline resistant region. You see, let's go back to the previous slide. We had inserted our gene of interest in tetracycline resistant region. And because of that, our bacteria of interest this is our bacteria of interest our bacteria of interest will not be resistant will not be resistant to tetracycline this means if our bacteria of interest is exposed to this particular plate is exposed to this particular plate our bacteria of interest will die right so let us assume what happens let us assume that these three here they die they will not grow 
in the first place they will not grow and you get an imprint something like this so what we get we get an imprint here on the tetracycline plate we are getting an imprint like this so we are getting one colony two three four and here we got the fifth colony now we compare this particular tetracycline plate with our master plate and we can clearly infer that colony one colony two colony three and colony four and colony five these five colonies the bacteria in these five colonies are the bacteria that took up the vector without our gene of interest you see these these so these bacteria will survive in the tetracycline plate because they still have the gene for tetracycline resistance our bacteria the one that we are interested in do not have the uh, do not have the gene for tetracycline resistance so how do we now isolate our bacteria how do we isolate our bacteria now this becomes simpler now we'll use the master plate we use the master plate and now we know that let us say colony uh, let us say colony six colony number seven and colony number eight are these three are our transformants so we'll make use of these three colonies we'll pick up this particular colony and we'll culture in a fresh nutrient media without that contains no antibiotic and then uh, once we have transferred these colonies we can grow them further in larger amounts and then these particular bacteria can be exposed to downstream processing now what is downstream processing let me get back to downstream processing these particular bacteria once we've isolated them we expose them to something called as downstream processing which means we will now uh, take these bacteria uh, and then expose them to certain uh, conditions by which we can take the protein of our interest outside for example you'll break down the cell we'll expose it to centrifugation or probably a technique called column chromatography etc etc and we'll obtain our uh, protein of our interest so this was basically the first way of selecting transformants by insertional inactivation now this process is called insertional inactivation why because we inserted our gene of interest in a particular area which inactivated a certain trait so here the characteristic that was inactivated was the synthesis of tetracycline uh, breaking protein right so I hope you've understood what insertional inactivation is now this was the first method and now this method if you look closely now if you appreciate now let me just demagnify it let's bring it back to center if you look at this particular procedure isn't this is a very tedious procedure I mean uh, once the recombinant DNAs are prepared let us look at the length of the procedure after that after that procedure first of all we have to uh, create a master plate we should have a master plate and then we will in the first step we will select uh, only the bacteria uh, that have taken up the vector and in the first step we can only uh, rule out or basically we are basically eliminating the bacteria that have not taken up the plasmid and then we have to perform another step so there are two steps involved and th this is a tedious process then you have to again make up the media and you have to do so much and so much of work around right so this is one practical method but then another simpler method is available to us now and this is and that particular method is called the blue white screening now this is the second method of selecting transformants from non transformants and let us see how this works now this particular method actually works in this particular way so we don't use we are not using pbr322 here we are using a different kind of a we are using a different kind of a plasmid so let us say this is our plasmid i hope now you are thorough with recombinant dna technology how the gene is taken out from our from a particular source and inserted and then transferred i hope you and competence and all you you are uh, completely thorough with so uh, coming to the blue white screening technique so we take a particular plasmid and this plasmid is different from pbr322 remember there are thousands of different types of plasmid vectors available today so this particular plasmid has two genes two marker genes so two marker genes now in in case of pbr322 we again had two marker genes one was the tetar marker gene and the other was amp r marker gene we we, we used both of them to basically identify where our uh, organism of interest was similarly there are two resist two marker genes here one is a tetracycline resistant gene and the other is called a beta galactosidase coding gene now our restriction site is present here 
inside of this beta galactosidase coding gene so if you remember beta galactosidase gene is present is a part of the lac operon now what does this beta galactosidase do it is involved in lactose metabolism let me let me use a darker color it is used in lactose metabolism so basically the product of the, the product of this beta galactosidase gene we, or we also call it the beta gal gene it produces this enzyme called beta galactosidase which breaks down lactose into two components uh, and that is the function of this particular gene now what do we use in this particular technique is we use this particular vector about which we have I've spoken to you about and then we require a certain organism we can take up a particular bacteria let's say we are taking a bacteria we have this geno extra we have the genomic dna and what else do we require we require nutrient we require nutrient media and in blue white screening the nutrient media actually is very important in this particular methodology we use a particular media which contains something known as x gal so let me let me draw a petri plate let's say this is a petri plate and inside of this petri plate we will have uh, a substance called x gal now this is somewhat like lactose uh, or basically this particular substrate this particular component component which is present in the nutrient media it is it can be broken down by beta galactosidase enzyme galactosidase enzyme so the enzyme beta galactosidase it, it breaks down this x gal which is a, a component which is present in the nutrient media and the breakdown products of x gal then produce a blue color this is what is important to know so in blue white screening uh, we make use of uh, two different components a different kind of a vector and we also make use of a nutrient media which is rich in x gal now let us have a look at the transformation so let us say we perform recombinant uh, uh, let us say we, we perform uh, the insertion of the gene the first step and what ha what have we done here so we have this uh, tetracycline resistant gene intact we don't touch this but we make a cut in the beta galactosidase gene coding gene and we insert our dna of interest so let us say this is our dna of interest so we've inserted it here right and then we take this particular plasmid we put it into the bacteria now again three consequences are possible once you make the once you make the bacteria competent competent three outcomes are possible the first the first outcome that is possible is here that the that the plasmid is taken up but some of those plasmids would have failed to take up our gene of interest so yes there will be these particular bacteria which are transformed but not up to our uh, requirement up to our desires the second kind of bacteria that will be produced after making the cell competent some of the cells will not take up the particular vector just like in the previous case and then there will be these th third type of the cells which would have taken up the vector and what kind of vector they would have taken up the vector that was successfully that successfully allowed the insertion of our gene of interest so we got these three bacteria and now we are going to go for screening now how do we go for screening now we choose our media you remember our media now our media is special because it contains the component called x gal right and it also contains tetracycline antibiotic so our nutrient media contains tetracycline antibiotic it contains x gal it also contains nutrients for to support the growth of these particular bacteria of our interest now the bacteria the bacteria that were made component like in the previous case we took a conical flask we take these particular bacteria and then we pour them or basically spread them in three different plates so this is the first plate we spread them second plate we spread them third plate we spread them now let us look at the first case the bacteria that have taken up that have taken up the vector without our gene of interest how will they appear now these particular bacteria when they start they will start consuming the nutrients right but because there is tetracycline will they die no they will not die why because they have this particular plasmid and here is tetracycline resistant gene so they will not die and they will grow and also this media contains x gal so they also have a beta galactosidase uh, coding gene here it is intact so it will produce these particular bacteria will produce beta galactosidase enzyme they will produce beta galactosidase enzyme and that particular enzyme these particular cells because they are producing beta galactosidase enzyme 
they will break down the X gal, okay? Which they are, so these cells will basically take up the X gal. And then the X gal is broken by these beta galactosidase enzyme. And the byproduct of that beta, of that X gal, the byproduct of X gal will turn these bacteria blue. And when these large number of bacteria are present around, the colonies also appear blue. So what do we see here? That the non-transformed bacteria, the bacteria that were not transformed with our gene of interest, they appear blue. Now well, let us look at the second case. Now the bacteria that fail to take up the plasmid will, will die. They, in the second plate, we will not have anything. They will die. Why will they die? They will die. It's not about the second plate. It's the same plate only. Okay, we have shown three plates here. Basically, we are pouring a mixture of the bacteria and uh, we are showing it in three different ways. So the bacteria that have our vector without the gene of interest will appear blue. The bacteria that fail to take up this particular plasmid vector will not grow. Why they won't grow? Because they do not have tetracycline resistant gene and the media contains tetracycline. And the bacteria that have our gene of interest because the gene has been in inserted in the region of beta galactosidase these particular bacteria will not produce the enzyme beta galactosidase hence the x gal that will enter into these cells cannot be broken down and because when x gal when x gal cannot be broken down no blue color is produced so the colonies of our choice the bacteria that we are looking out for will appear colorless and here we've shown three plates but basically you see all the three in just one particular plate in this particular plate we will see our colorless i'm representing them by yellow okay so these are the transformants and then we will see the blue colonies which are basically the bacteria that were transformed but do not contain our gene of interest and which bacteria will, will perish the ones that fail to take it Right. So what is the advantage of blue white screening over the screening using the vector PBR322 is that this is a simpler method. It can be executed in just one step. I hope the screening of transformants from non-transformants is clear to you. Thank you.